Hey developers, today we're gonna look at seven GitHub repositories, which are great. If you're looking for more knowledge on development, these range everywhere from awesome lists of cool development topics that you need to know, to tech interviews, to free eBooks. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you can learn all about these. So let's begin. Hey, before we get started, I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and providing all of you with 30% off their Python data science course that was co-developed with IBM. This course contains 68 hours of high quality content teaching you modules like NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, and Matplotlib. You'll learn the essential concepts of Python programming and gain deep knowledge in data analytics, machine learning, data visualization, web scraping, and natural language processing. You'll apply these skills in four real-life industry-based projects and be eligible to receive an IBM Simply Learn Joint Certificate after completing 85% of the course. So make sure you click on the link in the description below. It has, uh, you can click on it and you'll be able to sign up for the course and get the discount. So make sure you click on that link in the description of the course. Hey, and before I'm done with the sponsorship, I just wanna let you guys know, I've been doing this course myself. Uh, I've been going through the course overview, um, learning all about uh, Hello and this, welcome this to the introductory um, video data science with data Python, and I'm learning a ton. I've just kind of started, but it's really well done and really in depth. I'm really enjoying it. It doesn't just have videos, it has quizzes, it has these knowledge checks like throughout the course. Like this one I got, I just tried it here a second ago. I got two wrong, I just guessed, 0% correct. But it really not just teaches you how to be you know, data science with Python, but it quizzes you and makes sure that you're paying attention. And it has this awesome practice labs. It has these four assignments that you can do and it has live classes. So I can sign up for these live classes, get actual help from an, from an instructor and, and, and learn that way as well. So this isn't something you do in isolation. This isn't just a bunch of videos. This is just a ton of information, quizzes, knowledge checks, practice labs, assignments, uh, live classes. It's just well worth taking a look at. So make sure you click on that link in the description below. Thanks. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer, and this channel is all about web development, React, Vue, JavaScript, tutorials, tips and tricks. So make sure if you like this type of content, click that subscribe button and leave a comment below. Let me know of some GitHub repositories that you guys use often. I'd love to hear it. Make sure you leave a comment below. So these are seven different GitHub repositories. And you got to remember that GitHub is not just for libraries and your favorite frameworks. It's and your favorite open source projects. It's actually a great place to share information. You can upload markdown files and you can basically share anything you want. In fact, I've been to some conferences where all the speaker descriptions and bios are in one repository that someone creates or people put notes in these repositories. You can do a lot of stuff with GitHub and it's absolutely free. So it's a great resource. And also I want to give a little bit of a shout out before we start. I kind of got some of this idea from this dev.2 article by Miroslav Fairjox, six GitHub repos for instant knowledge boost. I included a couple of his and then uh, mostly the ones I have found useful myself that weren't in this list, but he actually has some really good ones in here too. All right, so to begin with, I've talked about this before, and this is the awesome lists. So if you don't know what this is, this GitHub repository, and by the way, I'll put a link to all these repositories in the description below, so you can click on them and easily access them. But basically this is a open source project to curate awesome lists of things. For example, if I'm going to look for awesome, I don't know, programming languages, I can go and look through here and this says, okay, in JavaScript, well, what about promises? If I click on promises, someone's created an awesome promises repository and it's a curated, curated list of useful resources for JavaScript promises. So you can see, oh cool, here is some, uh, here's the promise cookbook, here's JavaScript promises introduction. So like these are links to websites, to books, to videos where you can learn more about this topic. And it's just incredible um, this that there's just so many different 
topics here. And this is essentially, this is the one list of lists. So th there's individual awesome lists of each technology. And then this curates all those awesome lists into one big list. So there's just thousands of, of different things you can learn here from everything from security to databases, to editors, to books, computer science, front end development, back end development, like front end development, I'm big into Vue.js. So there's a view J awesome for Vue.js and cool. So if I wanted to learn more about, I don't know, job portals for Vue.js books, let's see, is my book in here? Yeah, here it is. Vue.js in action by Eric Kancha and Benjamin Liswan. There's my book that I created. It's on this list. And if you click on it, you can go right to it and you can see, oh, here's some of the other books that have been created in Vue. By the way, mine's the most updated and best one out there. So make sure you pick it up. I'm just kidding. But no, it's there's just really cool stuff. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Vue.js Component Patterns course. What's this? Oh, it looks like this is, uh, it talks about component patterns and it's a course. That's neat. So you can see there's a lot of information. So this is uh, a list of lists. Oh, YouTube channels. See View NYC ViewConf. This is probably where I need to put a pull request to add my own YouTube channel because I do a ton of view development tutorials as if as if you're new to this channel. That's one of the things I really like to do. Cool. So I would recommend when you are first starting to learn a technology, check Awesome View. Um, check out the Awesome View GitHub repository and see if you can find some free resources. And by the way, 90% of these are free. There are some paid courses in here and some paid things, but a lot of this stuff is free. All right, so another repository I really like, and I think this is great, especially when you're doing projects, is the public APIs. So I'm always like thinking when I create a project, especially if I'm creating a personal project, what back end resource do I want to hit? Do I want to, do I want to roll my own? Or is there like a free one out there that it can use? And what this is does is this is a curated list of all these different APIs you can hit. So if let's say you wanted to grab something for cryptocurrency, click on cryptocurrency, you can see, do they have an auth key? It does it require HTTPS, is it cores? So if you wanted to do Binance, you can click here, it'll go to the repository and it'll give you instructions on how to sign up. And usually, if you're looking for something simple, you don't want an API key because usually 90% of the time that means you need to register and sign up. Um, but if you don't have a, a API key, it says no here, then it might be easier to connect to it and to actually play around with it. So I did this recently when I was trying to do a tutorial on, um, I think I was doing like on Breaking Bad, uh, I did. I needed an API to, to contact to show a list of items, and I just chose the Breaking Bad API. And I believe that's in here somewhere. Maybe it's under TV shows or movies. I can't remember. It's in one of these. Let's see if I'll search for it. Breaking, here it is. So it was under video. So here's the Breaking Bad API. And I liked it, and it was a perfect use because it had no for auth, yes for HTTPS. So I didn't have to register for anything, and I could just use it right out of the box. And same thing if you're a Game of Thrones fan and API to Ice of Fire. Now there's other ways of doing this. I know people love placeholder. There's a million different placeholder type websites, meaning that if you're trying to just grab images, you can use a placeholder image. Place Kitten is one of them. Um, this is a little bit different because we're talking to an API, but um, we should probably do another video on different placeholder services because I think there's quite a few out there. But I like this website. I like this repository just to get an idea of some easy to use APIs that I can just plug into some of my projects and uh, use for free or, or how, that I need to register for. I mentioned this one in a previous, a previous video and it got really popular. I think I got like 10,000 views on this, but this is the idea of trying to get a self-taught education in computer science. And so this OSSU computer science GitHub repository is all about that. So if you are someone that didn't get a traditional computer science degree, well, like many of you probably listening right now, or if you do have a computer science degree and you want to kind of freshen up and you're trying to go for job interviews, this is a great resource because it gives you a list of what you can do to basically get equivalent computer science degree. And it has a lot of links to, to free resources. So like if you want to go, I don't know, core theory, 
you can see here's an algorithm design analysis course. It's eight weeks. And if you click on it, it usually these all most of these link up to free resources. So there is these MOOCs that they're called, these massive online courses that Stanford, MIT, a bunch of different universities offer for free. So you can see here the price is free on this. All you need to do is sign up. And what they do is usually you don't get that one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one help that you would get from a professor, but they usually do accept assignments and then you do have to take some sort of test at the end and then you get a certificate. So like say, can I earn a statement of accomplishment? And so if you complete at least 70% of the graded assignments of the course, you can receive a statement of accomplishment. So this whole OSSU is thinking that if you complete what they recommend, you're essentially getting equivalent of a computer science degree. Now, I don't know anyone that's done this. I would love if you have done this to leave a comment below, or if you're going to do this, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and talk to you. But I've heard a lot of positive things about this. Like I said, when I did this video about a year ago, I don't think anybody was talking about this and it got thousands of views. And now I see like tons of views on YouTube about people talking about OSSU. I think it's definitely caught on and it's getting bigger and bigger. And by the way, any of these repositories, since they are open source, you can clone them. You can push pull requests against them if you want to add things to it, which is great. This one, this tech interview handbook, I hadn't heard about this until I read this dev.2 article. And so this is a really cool resource to help you with algorithms in your next technical interview. So they have a how to prepare for coding interviews, interview cheat sheet. Let's take a look at the interview cheat sheet. So like here's like what you should do. Pre prepare pen, paper, and earphones. Find a quiet environment. You know, things, things upon receipt. Like don't spend too much time introducing yourself. Uh, you know, one thing I always hear during coding interviews is, you should talk through the problem, but you don't wanna just keep talking through the whole time because um, that's not as helpful. So these are like cool things you can kind of look and see what you can use here. And you know, it has some introduction stuff, behavioral round. So it doesn't just go into algorithms, but, but how do you pass the behavioral section? There is so many resources out there for tech interviews. By the way, I am a proud sponsor of Algo Expert. If you click in the link in the description below, I have a link to algoexpert.io. And if you um, use Algo Expert, I believe, .io slash Eric, you can even get a few, few extra problems for free if you sign up. So make sure you click on the link in the description. I just want to say that, but there's so many great resources. I could probably do a whole video on how to prepare for a technical interview, where, what resources to go to, what to look for, and, uh, and how to do it. I think that would be useful. Once again, if you think you want to see a video like that, leave a comment below. But this is neat. Regardless, check out this this uh, repository. If I can get back to it. You can see this is actually hosted on GitHub because there's a lot of cool stuff for it. Now look, there's even a front-end interview handbook, which is in a different repository. So if you're beginning at trying to get a front-end interview, then this might be a place to look. Awesome. All right, so this is another one I found free programming books. This was also recommended in the Dev.2 article. I haven't seen this, but from what I can tell, it just has a ton of list of free eBooks. So the list, this list, list was originally cloned of, of a Stack Overflow of a list of freely available programming books. And it has tons of, of looks like there's been tons of commits over the years. And it's part of the free ebook foundation and they're always looking for contributors so i don't know let's take a look at one of these in english looks like you have many different languages so it's neat okay so we have javascript graphql books rails books let's see let's see if we want to look, learn graphql okay, there's one in here the road to graphql the bare essentials so you click on that it brings you to this book. Uh, it looks like, of course, I probably you're gonna find this. Some of these free eBooks, they may they may require you to put your email address in. They may try to upsell you for a course, but that's okay. I mean, it's still free information. You don't have to pay for the course. Let's see. Let's try. It's kind of jQuery React. Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like there's a ton of front end resources, but there's a f some. Let's say if we do React, there's like two, 
two books. It looks like one's the egg dot, egghead.io courses on React Fundamentals, and the other one is Road to React. So it looks like some of these are not necessarily books, but they're, oh, here's, I'm sorry, this is free courses I clicked on under free programming books. So that's why they're free. But, but let's look at free podcasts, programming books. So here's free programming books in English. All. All. Okay, English here. Okay, there we go. So now if we go to, oh, look, there's Elm, JavaScript, JavaScript. Okay, here's a lot more. Here's Node.js. Let's do Node. Okay, there's a bunch of books in here. No documentation, node up and running. Looks like some of these are going to O'Reilly sites. But I wonder if some of these links are probably not right. But I think this is still interesting. You probably look through this. You could definitely find some resources that are free. Some you might have to pay for, but you know, interesting. All right, so this is called free dash four dash dev. It's a list of software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service options that have free tiers. So this is neat. Like for example, in my last video, I talked about how if you want to learn AWS, sign up for the free year of AWS hosting, and it's it's well worth doing because you can get hundreds of hours of computing time and everything you ever needed for free. So like here, major cloud providers, AWS, this is what you can do through their free plan. But so does Google has a free plan, and so does Azure. Uh, so it's kind of cool that you can see what sort of free plans you can get with all these different services. I would highly recommend uh, taking a look at it and seeing what you can get for free for these different services. And lastly, but not least, is to do MVC. When I'm trying to learn a new project, it's always a good idea to look at the to do MVC because to do MVC has every single framework have you ever heard of, and it's all in a easy to use um, guide here. So if you click on this to do MVC link right here, you can then get examples. So here is Backbone.js, React, Angular, Mithril, Ember.js, Vue.js, Knockout. You can see here one's Compiler.js, Labs. So I always like looking at these. You can see like, how do they do this in Ember? So here's the example. But if you click a part of to do MVC, I think you actually have to go back to the GitHub. Yeah, you can see go examples here. And I can see like all these different languages that they created an, a to-do app from. You can see, well, how do they do it in Ember? And then you can take a look at the actual source code. I think this is really helpful. So here's the app config. Here's the app file. I don't know, index.html. Here's the routes that they set up. So very cool. All right, so that's all I have right now. So I, these are seven different repositories that I find really useful. I definitely think it's instant knowledge boost. Let me know what you guys like in the comments below. And if you guys like these type of list type videos, I'll do a few more. I have a lot of ideas of, of cool resources that I like to share with everyone. Let me know. Thanks.